just love listening to the tone of this guitar and just strumming chords. I'm not even playing anything particularly great. But this is Kevin from JJ Hat Center, the oldest hat shop in New York. Uh, maybe the East Coast, I'm not sure, but uh, we're 108 years old. I'm working uh, at the shop on Fifth Avenue in Manhattan for 24 years. And today I'm going to talk about um, the top five tips that I would like to give you as like your hat guy, your hat tech, your hat caddy, your hat roadie technician, I'm your guy. Um, I'm going to give you five really nice tips that I think are important in terms of holding on to your hat, making them last long, keeping them fresh or keeping them looking the way you want them to look. Some people don't like fresh. They like a very controlled looking rumpled hat, kind of, you know. But anyway, I usually do these things kind of like I wing them. I never plan anything, but what I did is I made a, a list of five things I got on the floor here. Okay, the first thing, all right. The fr okay, here's something. This happened the other day. It happens every once in a while. Never, ever let anybody steam the inside of your hat. Occasionally, some lady brings in a really beautiful vintage hat, like, you know, a beautiful beaver Italian borsa from, you know, the 30s or 40s in perfect, perfect, pristine, brand new, right out of the box condition in a beautiful color. It was like white with like a teal blue band, which is like the most like desirable color. You know, it was not white, but almost white, like dark gray. Everything looked brand new. This is like a, you know, silk, real silk lining and, but the leather band on the inside was totally burnt, like, like it shrunk up into a little piece of bacon, like burnt bacon. Instead of being like about that wide, it shrunk down to about that wide, crunchy, brittle to the touch, kind of round. So in other words, somebody steamed the inside of this lady's beautiful hat, which is worth at least $500, probably more. They didn't know what they're doing. Some kid, like at you know one of these goofy brother shops that don't know what they're talking about, said, "Oh, I'm gonna steam the inside. We want to sterilize it now. Let's sterilize the inside." That's what they always say. I've heard it too. I've heard like you know idiots doing it all over the place. Um, Let's sterilize it, and then they stick the steamer on the inside. And the second the steamer, the steam touches that vintage leather, which has like you know, maybe 10% of its moisture left after like, you know, uh, 70 years on the, in the box. That moisture disappears like this, the second the steam hits it and the leather burns up, completely ruined. You can't put like lotion into it, it's gone. It's just like, turns into a little skinny piece of burnt like bacon, like shrinks into almost one quarter of its size and just crunchy and worthless, you know. Almost looks like a dog bone, like a rawhide dog bone. You know, remember those dog chew things, those rawhides? That's what it looks like. It, it turns into that hard, like, uh, rawhide stuff. And uh, it's very thick and rolled. So you can't, you can't salvage it. Um, basically, you have to cut the sweatband out and get a sweatband job. So if you really like your vintage sweatband, which was part of the value of the hat, you know, it's got all the original fonts from 1930, and it's per this guy ruined it. You know, a regular sweatband can cost, you know, anywhere from like 20 bucks to 50 bucks to fix. A vintage band like that, I'm going to say, could be 10 times that um, in value. Uh, if we're talking about a five, six, seven, eight hundred dollar hat, the sweatband alone, you know, for an eight hundred dollar hat is worth more than fifty. I'm, I mean, that's like a hundred dollar sweatband you just burned off. So, what I'm getting at: never steam the inside of a hat, no matter what. Don't do it. If you think you're the man, try it. Um, the leather will burn. Now, if there's no leather inside there, that's a little different story. If you have a ribbon sweatband. There's really nothing to burn there, so go ahead. I give you permission to steam it on the inside, but basically, yeah, most of the fedoras we're dealing with have these leather sweatbands, so don't steam the inside. It ruins it. Sometimes not instantly, sometimes instantly. Sometimes you hit it once, it's fine. You go back around, you hit it again. The second time, psh, ruins it. It's unpredictable. Don't do it. Keep the steam away from the sweatband. Okay, tip. We're counting down. Tip four. All right, heat. This is related. 
Keep your hats away from heat. Heat is number four. In the winter time, keep them out of those hot rooms with the like blasting radiator. That is gonna shrink the leather and make the hat tighter. And that's why you got that red line on your hat, your head, from putting on a hat that's too tight. Inside the end of the sweatband, there's a little wire like a see that shiny part right there? The end? That little shiny part is called the reed. There's usually a very thick piece of nylon fishing line in there, which gives it its circular shape, gives it its structure. Now, when a hat is like two, three sizes too tight for you, it's like you're trying to pull a round piece of piano wire over your skull. It's like a torture, you know? That's a wire. It's not just a hat that you're trying to pull. It's a, it's a ring, you know? So, you can clip that. You know, if your hat is like three sizes too tight, you could clip it back here or even remove it, you know, but that'll give you less structure and less of a round shape. You know, your hat gets softer. Um, crushable, rollable travel hat things have that. And when you talk about a travel hat, there's usually no reed. So it's not like out of the question. There are many hats with no reeded sweatbands, but most leather sweats have it, you know, unless it's a travel hat, again. Okay. Keep your hat away from heat. That means in the winter time, keep it away from hot rooms. If you have a really hot apartment, you gotta find some place. Um, you gotta crack a window in the bathroom, in the kitchen, in some little foyer somewhere. Crack the window and keep your hats there because you're ruining your sweatbands in that hot apartment. There's nothing you could do except opening the windows a little bit, turning off the heat in one room or something. Crack the window in the bathroom. Let your hat dry in there. Store your hat hanging in the bathroom behind the door where nobody sees it. It's better than ruining them in the heat. Okay, heat is gonna trash your hats. Now, if you don't wear your hats at all, it's gonna shrink it like crazy. If you continue to wear your hats during the winter, generally wearing it reverses the shrinking. So, the shrinking dries at a millimeter. You put it on, the oils from your head, the perspiration, the heat, all that stuff, conditions the leather, breaks it in, that undoes that millimeter. So you're back to square one again. But if you don't wear it, it's like millimeter, millimeter, millimeter. Every year it shrinks more and then you're like, wait a minute, I bought this hat seven and a quarter. It feels like a six and seven eighths. What happened? I always ask, do you wear that hat? I bet you haven't worn it in like six years, right? Yeah, how did you know? That's what happens. The leather shrinks when you don't wear it. So keep it away from heat. This also applies for the summertime. People's straw hats, there's a phenomenon where people have straws that shrink. They say, oh, I gotta buy it a little bit because they shrink. This is because it gets wet from your sweat, from moisture, from humidity, from the ocean, from splashing, mostly sweat, I would think. But um, it gets wet during the day and kind of heavy and stuff. And then you put the hat down on your hot dashboard and you go and you have a picnic lunch for three hours you, know, you have a few beers you don't really think about it you grab your hat and you go for a drive and you go home now for that three hours your hat was baking and dehydrating what happens is you're drying it too fast you can't dry things quickly like flash drying it's like microwaving you got to dry things naturally just just hang it up no heat don't stick your hat on a the hot dashboard or, or wherever, you know. Keep it out of the sun too. If it's on a chaise lounge next to the pool and it's wet or just a little sweaty, just from wearing it, it's, just put it in the shade. It's not gonna shrink. It's not the fault of the hat. It's your fault, basically. Your hats shrink, it's part of your deal. Go a little loose. Pat it down, go on the looser side. Don't buy your hats tight, it's okay. Um, but if you listen to me, keep them in the shade, none of that sun drying stuff. Now you're saying, well, you know, things happen, you know, you, it gets wet, you're out in the sun for an hour. Yeah, things happen. But don't do it on purpose. Don't dry it in the sun when it's wet. And, you know, if you had a few beers, you know, well, you know, just put your hat, put your junk hat on if you're going to do that, you know. Don't wear your $300 hat to, to the beach, you know. All right, let's get back to number three. Here's a really good one. Every once in a while, you gotta stiffen your hats. People don't do this. Every once in a while, your hat needs to be not only reshaped and cleaned, but stiffened. The hat has stiffener when you first buy it, and it breaks down just from grabbing it, just from making those little cracks, and okay, and all those cracks break up, and then you have a soft hat, 
just from you know doing things, wearing it. Your shoes get soft, right? Your boots get soft. This gets soft, like your jeans get soft, okay? And your hat gets soft, you got to um, think that it's not able to hold up its own weight anymore. So this, this spray is like a binding agent that's holding it together and holding that scoop up and holding it like almost like glue or plastic coating. When that breaks down, the weight of the water and your sweat and everything makes the hat droop and it can't hold its weight anymore. That's 99% of the brim problems. Okay, especially flat brims and those ladies' hats, they just, they get big, you know, they flop down. And like, what's wrong? Well, the hat's either too cheap, it can't hold its weight, or it's just too soft. You've got to stiffen your hats. Not all the time. It could be once every two years, I say. So, you know, bring your hats in to be steamed like at least once a year, once every season. More is better if you do it at least a couple of times, you know, once every couple of months, whatever. But um, have it steamed. Stiffen too. Stiffen your hat, straw or felt, western or dress, it doesn't matter, not caps, but all of these hats can be stiffened. Uh, if they're getting floppy, that's what you need. You, people say, oh, I tried the steamer, it didn't work. It does nothing without the stiffener. The stiffener is the whole process of the steaming. It's like a plastic shell. The steam melts the shell. You manipulate it where you want, you let go and it cools and hardens again. So if there's no spray there, or there's no shell, the steaming does nothing. It's just softening, it just does nothing. So, stiffen it every once in a while, you'll get way better results with reshaping. You'll, everything will be better. Your hat will be in shape, it'll repel water better, it'll hold itself, it'll look, last longer. Get it stiffened, not all the time, it could be once every five years, every two years. If your hats are lasting you 20 years, do it every five years. Um, you probably take good care of it. If you're, I would say, you know, if your hats last you 10 years, well, you know, bring it in at least a couple of times. I would say maybe every two years. That that would be healthy. You know, three years, two years. Okay, let's get back to the next one. Next one on the list. Store your hat correctly. I say this in every video. Okay, don't store your hat flat. It messes up the flange. The flange is a curved hinge that allows your hat to snap up and down. Without, people say, well, I don't want that curve up, you know. I wear it down. Well, it doesn't matter. If you want your hat down, you've got to have a good up first. It's all about having that curve. Without this curve called the flange, you can't get it to go down. That's when your hat stops staying down. You know, your hat stops staying down. It just won't stay down. It flips up. That's from setting it on its brim like this. What happened is the curve, the flange, is gone and it's now flat. I guarantee you look at the front of that hat, it's flat. The back is probably not as bad, but okay. When you set your hat down like this every day, the wet hat, from the moisture in the air, the sweat, the humidity, the rain, it's heavy. It falls, it presses it down, and then when it dries, it dries flat like that table. So your flange is gone. It might not do it all in one day. Maybe it takes two or three wet days or something. But sometimes once is all it takes. It gives you floppy brims. So now you messed up your brim from keeping it flat. Don't keep it flat, okay? The other thing is you're going to grab it in the same place, same place, every time. When you put your hat on your dresser, you grab it right here. Here's the weak point. People wear that out and make holes in their hats. The hat gets thrown out and then they got to buy a new one. So if you keep your hat upside down, you solve that problem. No more holes in the crown and no more messed up flange. Because what you're doing is you're taking your wet hat, your dry hat, whatever, you flip it back up and you're creating that flange shape. You're keeping it in that natural shape where it wants to be. You're not flipping the hinge. You're keeping it in its natural shape, which is flanged, curved, and you're letting it harden like that. It's just floating. It's floating in the air. That's how it will dry. If you put it like this, it's going to flatten out. It just will. If you hang it, that's okay too. But hanging it, I don't like it as much because we tend to also grab it there. So, I feel upside down is the best, but hanging is also good. Also, in the box is good. It's upside down. The long, of the, long and the short of it is don't set it on its brim. You can hang it. You can put it upside down, you can put it in the box upside down. Just don't set it flat on its brim. That's the worst thing for your hat. It's the number one hat killer. And if you want to keep, you know, buying more hats, 
keep doing it. Uh, we don't mind selling them to you, but we want your hats to last a long time too. Um, so yeah, flip them upside down, hang them, put them in the box, which is upside down. Okay. Here's the very last one now, the very final, final number one hat tip, okay? People forget this one all the time. Inside your sweatband right here, okay? What happens if your hat gets lost? Put your number in there. Put, say, if, if found, 212-439-6828. Or, um, if found, please return to Kevin... Scooby Dooby Ruby at gmail.com. You know, put your Gmail there, put your phone number. You don't have to put your name, you know, not too much information. Just say reward if found. If you feel like you give the guy 20 bucks, it's a $400 hat, write reward if found. That's fine. Maybe it'll give him more incentive not to keep it, you know. A lot of these taxi drivers and people find the hats, they want to get it back to you, but you don't have your business card in there, you don't have a number in there. You know what? You're going to lose it because that Good Samaritan, he doesn't know where to find you. So, okay, the Good Samaritan wants to give your hat back to you. Put your name inside it. Write your name and email. Eh, I would say just write your email. Write your number. That's enough. Write, if found, bam. And put it in there with some tape. You know, don't just tuck it under the band. It's going to fall out. Use a little tape and tape it under the sweatband. Under the sweatband is the raw no man's land. It doesn't matter. It can be taped there. Um, trust me, it's fine. Or just do something like that. Um, use a sticker on the top of the crown. Something that's permanent that's not going to fall right out. Put your name in your hat. If it's special to you, if it's your dad's hat, your grandpa's hat, sentimental, if it's worth a lot of money, it's vintage, irreplaceable, or you just really want it, you know, even put reward if found. I, I've never done that. I've usually just written if found, you know, you know. And that's enough. So put it inside your sweatband. That's the best tip you could do for your hat because when you do leave it in a taxi and you do leave it in a train, at least that you know cool guy who doesn't keep it and stuff, he'll get it, be able to get it back to you, okay? Because you were smart enough to leave your name there. So you can put your business card in there. And just make sure it's tucked in real good, you know? Let's try that again. <laughs>